on, everybody? Welcome to the ninth episode of the NRW Weekly Respawn, a show where we try to catch you up on some of the latest gaming news of the past week. I'm one of your hosts, Mark Admana, joined today by my co-host, Andrew Roa, and of course, my brand new haircut, Derek Amana. Hey, hey, there he is. All right, guys, we got eight stories on the Respawn Report today. Let's get into it. What's new, Pikachu? Thank you for that. Um, so, starting things off, on Monday, February the 4th, Respawn Entertainment, the studio behind the Titanfall series, uh, basically showed off their brand new hero shooter, Battle, Battle Royale. Royale, yeah, exactly, um, Apex Legends. So, this game consists of 60 players per match, 20 teams of three-man squads, and all the characters, it's kind of... Uh, what would you call it? Class based? Yeah, I'd say class based, similar yeah. to Siege, Team Fortress. Right. Everybody right. has their certain so abilities. Is right. <laughs> and Paladin, a little bit of that Paladin. Yeah, too. exactly. That's why I mentioned Overwatch earlier. It's that hero shooter style where all the characters are different classes, somewhat. Um, so they will also have a battle pass system, similar to that of Fortnite. Uh, right now we got four seasons lined up for the year of 2019, one starting in March. The second starting in June, one in September, and then December. <clears throat> With all these uh, seasons, um, players will be able to unlock new characters, the legends, weapons, and new loot will be available as well. Uh, have you had a chance to check it out yet? Yeah, I've been playing Apex Legends since it pretty much came out. Um, I've been playing the Medic class right now. Okay, I'm nice. in love with the gameplay. Uh, I love the style, the ability to yeah. have that quick movement with the sliding. Oh yeah. Um, oh, gameplay yeah. mechanic where you're going down a hill and you're able to just kind of slide and have that cool James Bond moment yeah. sliding, yeah. taking a shot like 200 have meters away. Have you managed to kill that sliding? Yeah, uh, okay. I've got a few. The pistols. <laughs> Do what? Yeah. Uh, what was that pistol? Um, the wingman. Is the wingman. Wing that's my. Yeah. That's my shit too. Yeah. So I've been trying to do the slide kills. It hasn't worked out for me. Yet. <laughs> uh, Derek and I actually checked it out earlier this week. He also has been playing as the medic. Uh, I've been swapping between Pathfinder, the robot. Okay. I believe he's a scout, as well as Wraith, who can kind of teleport. Yes. And um, like open up. What do you call him? Spawn. Uh, um, portals, por I guess. Yeah, portals. Yeah. It's basically, you Chaser have the portal ish. gun. Yeah. yeah. And you're able to yeah. use it in an attack yeah. and defensive way. Exactly. Um, I've seen people play it in the supportive role, getting allowing your teammate to retreat if they need to, and also in a way to flank other teammates. So you can have a portal and then another portal okay. open on the other side, and you can just flank the other team while you have one okay. teammate just yeah. kind of standing there. You're giving me some good tactics here. I might yeah. have to try all that. Definitely. Um, a couple stats on the game for you guys. Uh, in the first eight hours after launch, which they dropped the game right after the live event, um, over one million players had logged in and started playing Apex Legend. <clears throat> Legends, excuse me. Um, Right now, Respawn is trying to work together and get uh, crossplay together yes. for us, so that, that'd be fun. I know you're playing on PS4. Yeah, I'm on PS4. Derek right and now. I were playing on PC, so if we'd be able to play together, I know that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. Um, but unfortunately, with the crossplay, there won't be any cross progression or cross purchases. So, okay. whatever platform you are leveling up your character on, you unfortunately won't be able to bring that over. But, you know, just to be able to play with your friends on whatever platform they're actually playing is a big plus. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, item number two on the Respawn Report, we have Microsoft expanding Xbox Live to Nintendo Switch, iOS, and Android devices. <clears throat> so, uh, at, I believe it's Inside Xbox, yes. their big event that they had this past week, um, mm -hmm. they announced that they would be bringing the Xbox Live services to a bunch of different platforms, uh, which, as stated, include the Nintendo Switch, uh, Apple iOS devices, mm -hmm. as well as Android. Um, <clears throat> so this support comes with Xbox achievements. You'll be able to like message your friends yep. between the platforms. Um, your game history will be viewable as well, as well as multiplayer abilities. So not entirely sure what all that means, but in terms of the Switch, like you do have Minecraft that yep. is playable on the Switch as well as Xbox and uh, Microsoft PC. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we'll see what they plan to do. We didn't have too much uh, information on it just yet, but just the announcement is pretty exciting with 
as stated in the previous story with crossplay coming to mm -hmm. Apex, you know, soon you'll be able to play wherever you want with whoever you want. Yeah. It's, it's my kind of future, honestly. Yeah, I definitely agree. <clears throat> and something that I kind of like with the integration of all our Xbox being spread out on all these platforms is the ability to unlock maybe achievements for okay. games that aren't Xbox exclusives. Like, okay. Let's say we have an iOS game like Arena of Valor or something, mm -hmm. and it gets some Xbox achievements. Okay. But yeah. it's for you're playing it on your mobile phone or you're playing that on the Switch. Maybe you're able to if that's get if that game gets ported to Xbox, maybe you get Xbox achievements be before cool. that even gets ported I can see over. That. I can do that is um is that game crossplay? So it's not, it's not yet. Not yet. Um, the Switch version and the iOS version yeah, are a yeah, little bit gonna, different. Okay. Yes, but. To have the ability to kind of use those games as our example to transition right. and create Xbox achievements for them before Xbox even gets that version it would be cool to start sure. unlocking and sure. getting your gamer score up. Sure. Yeah, it could. Uh, so we'll see what Microsoft has in store for us. Um, I don't expect personally for anything to be showing up within the Xbox One generation. We'll see what happens with Xbox Two or Xbox 720, whatever, uh, they whatever yeah. Project Scorpio. Project whatever. Scorpio, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> um, so, or actually, Project Scorpio Probably okay was, was the new Xbox, Xbox that came One out, X, but... right? It's, uh, yeah, the, the new project. Yeah, they yeah, announced yeah, it yeah. last year, so let us know in the comments project what actually. it is, because we can't think of it right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, moving along to story number three. We got some news on a game for a beta that I've been playing, a game that I've been talking about since the very first episode of Respawn, um, The Division 2. Yep. They've got um, some new Endgame content for us. If you played The Division 1, you'll know Endgame was lacking mm -hmm. very much uh, <clears throat> after, the, after you beat the main story quests of The Division 1. You were kind of left with nothing to do but hop in the dark zone and either wreck or get wrecked. Yeah. Um, this time around... They are bringing out a brand new um, faction called the Black Tusk. Uh, they kind of just roam around and invade basically every mission that you might be doing. Um, you will see them in the Dark Zone as well. Um, with them coming out, they will have a chance to drop higher loot or better loot, a higher chance to drop better loot. Um, as always, they will be spongy. As is with looter shooters. Yeah, the vision in general. <laughs> Just looter shooters in general. Um, as well as in the Division 2, once you do beat the main story, you will have the opportunity to unlock uh, specialization for your character, which um, <clears throat> will give your character a brand new weapon. Uh, I guess it's a fourth weapon because you have two mains and then your side piece. Mm -hmm. And then you get this new specialized weapon, either a grenade launcher, a heavy sniper rifle, probably like a 50 cal, and a crossbow that kind of works like the torque bow from uh, Gears, Gears of War. War. Yep. <laughs> so you shoot it, it penetrates them or whatever, and then after a while, boom, explodes. Mm -hmm. So with this beta, I have been playing. It's more division. I can't really complain about it mm -hmm. since I love the game so much already. It's exactly what I wanted, I guess, from the division. Um, it does take place, like we mentioned before, in DC. So that also is a plus. Being able to play in my own backyard, shoot up some fools. It's a big, big plus for big sure. Big plus, yeah, definitely. Yeah, can we take a time out real quick? Derek, can you stop it? Yeah. <laughs> you could. No. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Another game that got some new uh, end game details is Anthem. So uh, another game that we played a bit yeah. before last week. Um, so Anthem's gonna start off in March as well, a month after its release, with a new update called Act One: Echoes of Reality, followed by Act Two and Act Three, which uh, we don't actually have details for mm -hmm. at this time. Um, so once players will have completed the main campaign, they'll be able to grind out, do some challenges, uh, do like some bounty contracts, going through free play, which is always pretty fun. You, that's where you find like some of the biggest monsters I find. Okay. Um, and then they have strongholds, which is kind of their version of a raid. Uh, you, you know, you go into a cave or a dungeon, dungeon and yeah. find the dungeon or cave boss. Yeah. Um, challenges will be available on a daily, weekly, and even monthly basis. Uh, players will be able to get crafting materials and currency. Uh, legendary contracts will also be available for players hungry for a little bit more of a challenge. Yeah. 
Uh, strongholds are, like we said, kind of the raids um, of Anthem. Okay. Um, yeah, so another looter shooter, which hopefully won't die out right away, right after launch due to a lack of contra uh, content. Um, another end game thing will be the uh, Cataclysms. The um, Last week during the beta, they did show off the Shaper Storm. Uh, don't really have too much information about it as of right now. We do know that the entire map will basically change. There will be like a weather effect somewhere on the map. Um, you know, you'll pop in there. I'm sure there's going to be some big monsters with yeah. that. Uh, the, yeah, the rare loot is what I would assume would yeah. be in those maps. Um, <coughs> especially if those maps, um, it's in the free play, I yeah, believe, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Definitely think that's where you're going to get majority of the rare Your loot, loot. Yeah. towards the yeah, end game. I, yeah, definitely. Um, as with all looter shooters, that damn RNG. Mm. <laughs> yes, my yes. favorite. <laughs> Never getting what you want, yeah. but getting the exact same exactly. thing that you don't need. <laughs> exactly. For the uninitiated, RNG is a random number number generation, mm -hmm. uh, which kind of... It's a lottery pick. <laughs> yeah, basically, yes. It's a lottery pick of what drops that you get when you kill a boss or open a loot crate or what have you, other ways of getting loot. Mm -hmm. So... Hopefully they don't kind of screw us out like Division, or not Division, Destiny 2 did yes. where they kind of limited legendary drops very, very, or not legendary, but exotic, exotic. drops, yeah. They limited them pretty hard as well as, I think, uh, tapered the level leveling system. Did you I, I believe, about this? So. I believe yeah. so, yeah. Anyway, moving along, uh, an update on a story that we had, I believe, two weeks ago, or three weeks ago now, um, as in regards to EA and their relationship with Star Wars. Uh, Disney is apparently still happy with EA, so they've come out and said that they were never really great at self-publishing their own games, so they're happy to give it to somebody else, and EA, I guess, is kind of the ones that they've decided to go with for now. Mm -hmm. So we've gotten, as we said, um, Battlefront 1 and 2 in, yep. in regards to Star Wars from EA. Yep. Um, and I believe they did some post work and some expansions on the MMO. Um, the Old Republic? The Star Wars. Old, right. Yes. Star Wars The Old Republic, yeah. We, you've, we've played that, haven't we? Did yeah, we play that together? yeah, it's a really fun MMORPG right. that you have a good storyline with decisions in it as well, yeah, and exactly, companion system. Exactly. Developed by Bioware, yeah. also did, who's also doing Anthem, as yeah. well as the um, Mass Effect uh, series. series so. so, like, their storytelling and the decision-based storytelling mainly is kind of what they're known for the most. So, it looks like... Disney's going to stick with EA for now. Um, Visceral Games does have another game coming out, which we did discuss briefly on the couple episodes ago. Um, we don't really have to. We haven't seen anything from this game right now. We do have a title, though, uh, Jedi the Fallen Order. Yes. Um, so other than that, like the title alone sounds cool. Yeah, definitely. Right? <laughs> it reminds me of uh, Jedi Academy. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I'm pretty sure game. they're going to go into something that has to do with the Academy. But okay. as of now, we'll see. Um, next item, number six on the Respawn Report. We have the latest roster of Mortal Kombat 11. Yeah. And, and One of my favorite yes, games. Exactly. Uh, definitely really excited to see who we're going to get. Um, I believe the confirmed characters so far are actually Devora, yep. uh, Cabal, Kano, Scorpion, Raiden, Sub Zero, Garrus, and finally returning is Baraka. And then we're also getting Liu Kang, Sonya Blade, Scarlet, which was a older Mortal Kombat character that's being reintroduced okay. right now, and Shao Kahn, the I ultimate bad guy, who's right. literally the like, bad guy in right. pretty much all the Mortal Kombat. Yeah, I was wondering who Scarlet was when I read the article. I was like. Mm. Yeah, I have not heard her for a while. Yeah, yeah she was okay. a older character. Yeah, now that from... you mentioned it, I, I think I remember playing her in like two or three, maybe. It, it was one of the weirder ones where between like before they went back to that old style of Mortal okay. Kombat with gotcha. nine. Gotcha. It, I think she was in eight, I believe. Gotcha. Um, we do actually have a couple more characters that are unconfirmed. They're unconfirmed, now, but we saw them in trailers. Exactly, but we saw them in trailers. Uh, we have, is it Cassie? Yeah, Cassie, Cassie Cage, Cage, who I mean as in okay, Mortal Kombat. Nice. Kung Lao and... 
Chronica. Chronica, right. Yes. Um, they revealed that Chronica is actually not going to be a playable character for the game, but she um, is going to be controlling okay. the narrative and storyline of Mortal Kombat. Okay. Um, so maybe she might become a DLC character later on, sure. but as of right now, they say she's unplayable. One character who I'm sure fans are dying to get in this game that we haven't heard anything about so far is Shaggy. Yeah, Shaggy. <laughs> we'll see if they bring Shaggy, but... Well, I mean, with Tekken bringing in Negan, Shaggy coming into Mortal Kombat, why not? But that Just kind why of, not? Ed Boon, more sense. Ed Boon uh, promotes it. I guess. Like, he wants Shaggy in the game, too, and he made Mortal Kombat, so... That's true, that's true. Cross your fingers and hope Shaggy comes to the game. I just don't understand this, all this Shaggy head, <laughs> good for you guys who are trying to blow him up. Yeah. Um, last item on the Respawn Report, we have Halo Outpost Discovery, uh, which is a touring fan experience for all ages. Um, so basically, in a couple towns, they're going to be coming across... The U.S., mm -hmm. uh, I believe Orlando, Philly, um, I'll throw up the dates and locations up here for you guys. Um, so basically you'll be able to explore um, the world of Halo. Uh, you get an up close and personal, real life-sized warthog in front of you. Uh, they're going to do laser tag, which I hope they do in the vein of um, Red vs. Blue. Oh, that would be yeah. awesome. That would be awesome. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, there's going to be some VR experiences there as well. As of right now, we don't have too much details on all of the attractions that they'll be having there, but it's Halo, and it's like a museum of Halo, basically, mm -hmm. so... What more could you want? Yeah, uh, nothing really. Right. I mean, to allow the new generation to see Halo in real life and allow the old generation to come back and interact with the stuff they right. grew up with um, is a very smart advertising move, in my opinion, for Bungie, especially with the hiring of the new director of right. player voice. Yes. Um, I think they're pushing for Halo, Halo and the whole Halo series to come back uh, and kind of be that eSport game that it was before. Yeah, um, It's still an eSport game, but I think it's lost some of its traction with oh, Battle yeah. Royales. I think Halo should come back, and this is the right way to do it. Do you think they're going to do a Halo Battle Royale? I, In my opinion, I really hope that they don't. Um, Halo doesn't need a Battle Royale, in I my agree. opinion. They were born and bred on the squad-based, just team deathmatch awesome. or yeah. objective-based gameplay, and... They don't need to do that. They can stay themselves and still be competitive, right. in my opinion. Right, I agree. So, um, going back to the dates and locations, we have, uh, they will be in Orlando, Florida from July 5th through the 7th, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania from July 19th through the 21st, Chicago, Illinois from August 2nd to the 4th, Houston, Texas on August 16th through the 18th, and Anaheim, California from August 30th through September 1st. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for the Respawn Report. So let's get it into uh, some of the upcoming releases this week. Yeah. Anything um, you're hyped for coming out this week? Uh, I'm super, super hyped on Jump Force. I have pre-ordered that game. I played the beta, and I am just waiting to get that game finally in my okay. hands. Um, being able to utilize three characters and throughout the whole Shonen universe that they've kind of given us it's going to be amazing. I mean, and to create a whole character. You have more than a roster of three, right? So, yeah, there, it's Squad. three characters okay. like, that you choose per gotcha. bat, for the battles. Gotcha. Um, but mm -hmm. the roster contains, I believe, over 30 characters from yeah, the Shonen Jump series. That. They did actually just put out a couple um, new character trailers, I think they were yes. called. Um, so go ahead and check that out. They're all over the YouTubes. Yep. Um, um, they were from the JoJo. Um, okay. The yeah. Bizarre Adventures of JoJo. Right. That anime, if Jotaro. you guys have... Jotaro. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, a couple more noticeable, or notable, uh, releases coming out as... Um, Metro Exodus comes to PC, PS4, Xbox One on February 15th. Yep. With Crackdown 3, finally, coming yes. to PC and Xbox One. And to add on to that, uh, Xbox is actually giving out the original Crackdown for free mm -hmm. okay. to lead up into the Crackdown okay. 3 release. I didn't know that. I might have to check that out. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't checked out Crackdown before, you want something to introduce you to mm -hmm. it, check out the Xbox 360 Crackdown another, original. Another note on that, if you do have Xbox Game Pass, you will have Crackdown 3 available at launch. So if you're already paying for... 
Game Pass, you know, why not check it out? Yeah. We've been waiting long enough. Let us know how it is, guys. For sure. So that is, uh, comes out on February 15th as well on PC and Xbox. Uh, Far Cry New Dawn, the mm -hmm. standalone expansion to Far Cry 5, comes out on PC, PS4, and Xbox One on February 15th. And then Anthem for uh, EA Origin Access members comes out on the 15th as well for PC and Xbox One. Uh, the rest of us who aren't Access members got to wait until another week on the 22nd, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and as you mentioned, Jump Force comes on PS4, PC, and Xbox One, all on February 15th. So Friday, your wallets will, will be on fire. They will be on fire. <laughs> um, Stay in, play some games, or go out. Yeah, it's the long weekend. Enjoy exactly. your long weekend the exactly. way you like it. We're going to play some of these games oh, yeah, and give sure. you some information on them as well. For sure. So once again, this has been the Respawn, or this has been NRW Weekly <laughs> Respawn. I'm your host, Mark Admana. As always, Andrew Roa, Derek Admana. Uh, if you liked our show today, leave us a comment, give us a share, leave us a like, you know, subscribe if you haven't yet. And don't forget, for all your trailer reacts, comic book picks, and new releases, and everything at NEW, keep it locked in right here to NRW.